My favorite indicator in trading is Bongsben. I've been using them for five years now. And if you want to use them the same way I do, if you want to learn how to use Bongsben better, stay tuned and I'll teach you exactly how to use them in this video. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you subscribe below by clicking the subscribe button. My goal is to be able to bring you resources and tips and support on a daily basis to be able to achieve your goals of trading full time or getting more freedom from trading. There's a ton of stuff I want to teach you, but you gotta be showing me you're serious, of course, by hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell next to it to be notified of my future videos. So since I began teaching about Bong Shiban on YouTube here and sharing my strategy and things I do in the market, I've seen people either use them more sometimes they're trading or get confused. And if you get confused, then we have to change that. If you use them now well and you get some result, perfect, we'll leave it at that. But I want to teach you today how to use Bong Shiban on a very basic level, but we'll make it work so that you have a strategy that works with Bong Shiban and that you can make money in the market with that. Now let's discuss quickly here for a few seconds why I use Bong Shiban. There's a lot of indicators on trading you could use of course, Bong Shiban, you can use Fibonacci if you want, you can use the RSI, you can use just price action if you want to, that's totally fine too. The reason why I use Bong Shiban is because it's the indicator that for me makes the most sense. It's kind of logical, there's a formula behind it that I understand and that I believe is reflected in the market. Now you could agree with that or not, it's totally up to you. You're going to have to use an indicator that fits your preference or your belief about the market. Once you understand the formula behind it and why Bong Shiban makes sense, then the people I taught it to and the people I've explained how to use it and taught them my strategy or different things that I do, they get it really well and they like it after that. So you just have to understand the basics first to be able to know how to use it better in the future. So first let's discuss what is Bollinger Band. But I want to go back to the source with John Bollinger, who is the creator of Bollinger Band. What they said on their website here, which I find quite interesting. Bollinger Band are a technical trading tool created by Bollinger Band in the early 1980s. They arose from the need for adaptive trading bands and the observation that volatility was dynamic, not static, as widely believed at the time. So Bollinger Band can be applied in different markets, such as Forex, equities, of course, commodities, futures, and it can be used in most time frame, from very short to hourly, daily, weekly, or monthly. So that's, that's the basic, right? And the reason why I want to get there is because I want you to understand why this is important. The Bollinger Band show basically extreme points in the market. So kind of like the RSI would do in a similar fashion is that they show the extreme point, the highs and the lows. Of course, we'll look at the chart later on in this video to kind of discuss that more in detail, but it is the basic. So you can also use them for volatility. So you can use them to see how far the market goes in a different market. And that could be helping you to make better decisions on whether to enter trades or not. So you can use it as a tool to enter trades, which we'll discuss, or you can use it as a tool to evaluate the market as well and find out how much the market moves and even set targets if you want. It says on John Bollinger's website, Bollinger Band answered a question, are prices high or low on a relative basis? Which means that we kind of figure out based on this market, based on how price moves, is not price really high or really low or in between the levels. Okay, that's where you see the upper band and the lower band and of course in the middle is like the average. So that's kind of the question we answer with these bands. Now before we go further, I want you to let me know in the comment section below. Tell me, do you use Bong Shiban right now or not? If you don't, totally fine. Let me know as well. But if you use them right now in trading, tell me why, how. I'm curious to know and also other people in the comment are gonna be able to read that and know and get some resources. So I want you to comment below right now as I speak and let me know how you use Bong Shiban at the moment. Okay, so now it's time to get on the chart. I wanna show you how to trade Bong Shiban in two ways reversals and trends. So let's go inside the computer. All right, so let's discuss how to trade Bong Shiban a little bit here. So I want to show you the basics first, then we'll go to some examples in the chart after that. Basically, there are two ways you can trade Bong Shiban, and that is going to be with sideways market, which is my favorite. Okay, and that's going to be basically reversals. And the other way is going to be with trends. So here we talk about either breakouts or just trends in general. That's the two ways you can use Bong Shiban to trade in the market. So first things first, let's go with the sideways market and reversals. That's my favorite way to do it. And that's because I am favoring reversals in the market. That's my favorite strategy or, or type of trade to take in the market. And so the way this goes is your Bong Shiban will be like this in the market. This is your top band, right? Your middle band and your lower band. Now the key aspect here would be the fact that we would look for price to hit these here, upper band, lower band, to enter trades. So if price gets here, we will be looking to short. Now, of course, there's gonna be others, other factors there, other things we look at in the market. Or if price goes here, we'll be looking to buy in this kind of example. That would be the basic premise, and that would be how we do things. Now, of course, you could trade multiple times in between that. 
if I suggest you do nothing, if price goes here, you're gonna trade again, that's totally fine. That's how this would work. In a trend, well, you've got two examples. You could have an example where your bands would be wide and then they would be kind of over time tightening. So they would be wide, then over time like, tightening like this. Uh, so here. And what you would do is we call this a Bollinger Band squeeze. And that means that the bands are getting closer together. And what you look for is basically you look for a break of that to the upside or the, or the downside as a trend and a breakout. So you could be trading that if you want. Okay, when the bands are getting tight, it means that price is getting more tight. So it's likely to kind of explode over time and make a big move in one direction, which you can benefit from. I don't personally trade this way myself, but I know plenty of traders who use that method to trade. So you could use that if you want to. The other way you can do it is you can basically mix this one here, the reversal with the trends. And that would mean that you would look at, let's say buying the pair, we we'll here at the, middle, at the lower bonge band. So price would come back down, you would buy it. And then over time, as price would move upward, you would continue buying over here as these bands here get higher and higher. And so that could be a really good way to add to your trade. So to take multiple positions or a way where you can maybe move your stop loss or something of the sort in the market or just enter trades multiple. So as price goes up, you would be entering more positions with the bonge band and with the lines there. Does that make sense? So that, that would be the two ways to trade. Of course, there's other different ways and, and variant. There's a variant called a double Bollinger Band, which you can check out. I am not an expert at this, but if you want to look online, you can find this for sure. One of the people teaching that is KT Leans. So you can check these out if you want. This is another strategy with Bollinger Band that kind of caters more to trends. And not my specialty, but something you can look into if you want. Now let's take into account, especially this strategy here, the sideways one. And let's look on the chart how we can apply it. Here I am on Euro, Britain, Pound. Some basic examples about how to look at Bonge Band and what we can expect when price hits the top band or the lower band of Bonge Band. What does these price points have in common when price hits the top or the lower band of the Bonge Band? Well, we always almost kind of go back down, which is quite interesting. And that's because the Bonge Band, one of the principles of uh, what it's based on is the fact that it's probabilities and a normal distribution. Now, like most indicators, Bonge Band are really good, in my opinion, but they are not good all by themselves. You could not just trade Bonge Band by themselves in the market. It wouldn't really work well. Or you could make it work, but it would take a long time. What you need to do there if you want to trade Bonge Band properly is you're going to add some confidence to it. You're going to add different factors that will make your trades more likely to result in profits. And so that is going to depend on yourself. But let me share with you here a few things you can use to add confluence to your bonge band in the market. Now let's discuss confluence and how to increase the probability of your trades being winners when you trade bonge band. One factor would be yes, you have the bonge band and that's good and it's giving you profits and it's helping you find better trade opportunities. But it doesn't mean these trades are gonna be winner and it, you won't have a way to put your stop loss or take profit with just the bonge band. And so you can use other indicators if you want to mix it with that, you can use that for sure. But what I like to do myself is I like to, to use a mix of zones in the market and a mix of price action to be able to find better opportunities. And then I have the way where I enter trades on a slightly better base than just right at the market. So those are ways we can look at it and we can find, and we can add confluence or probabilities to our Bollinger Band trades. Okay, so zones, what we do is we look at support versus areas. Price action is can pick basically different candlestick patterns that could be beneficial with the Bonge Band. So for example, for myself, I use the engulfing candles and I'm gonna look at them within the trade setup I wanna take with Bonge Bands. So engulfing candles. Now, of course, you could be using pin bars. Some people also use uh, all these sharp patterns like the head and shoulders. Uh, you could be using the double top if you want. the bottom and so on. These are things you can use with Bonge Band because they add some confidence to it. So they are combining two things that work well together. And then entries. So for example, you could decide that within these concept patterns, we'll enter only, let's say, beyond the low. Okay, or the high, of course. Uh, so depending what you trade. Those are things you can do to be able to trade Bonge Band better. Now the last one is if you want to add more indicators. 
Uh, I've seen many people with a lot of success combine Bong Japan with the RSI. That could be something you want to look into uh, if you want. You don't have to. I think for me one indicator is enough, but if you want to use more than that, like two maximum, then you can do it if you want. Let me show you on the chart how that works out and how we can add confidence to our Bollinger Band trades. So you will notice here that we go up or down quite a bit when we hit the top or the bottom Bollinger Bands here, these, these levels. But it doesn't mean we can have winning trades there. Maybe you're gonna enter and then be stepped out, like here for example, where price gets down, but then we get stepped out here after. So that's not really winning. There's plenty of examples like that where we cannot really make a profit of that or it's just too small of a move to make profits. And so the answer to that is to be able to combine more factors to it. Okay, and the trade I want to take into account and I will look at here with you is this one over here. Okay, the first one we had. Now, first things first is if you want to be able to look at the zones on this, we should be able to look at support resistance areas or some Fibonacci levels. Now, I am not a Fibonacci trader here at all, so you could use that if you want. You could look at, for example, this move over here, so from here to there, and then calculate the Fibonacci here retracement, which would be probably 61.8. That could be a good level. You could do that if you want. I don't do that myself. I would look at different zones in the market. I am pretty sure this level here is a important level. So this is 0.927. Let's see on a high time frame how that looks like. You see, despite the line we have here on the chart, which is a bit messy, this is pretty much a resistance area, you see, it's a 0.927 over here. Where price bounced in the past, we bounced here again, we came back here again recently. Pretty good level to look for bearish trades. Okay, we are over here right now. So pretty good level to look for bearish trades in my opinion. Now let's go back down on the forward chart and try to catch that trade and find out how we can trade this. So here we have our zone taken into account for this trade right here. Now, what else do we wanna look at? We wanna look at candlestick pattern. And that's where I look at, like I said before, engulfing candles. So here we have a nice engulfing candle. We engulfed the previous candle before, really good. And that's why there's an arrow here before. That's because we engulfed the candle. So really good setup here. Okay, that's really good. So you see how price closed below the candlestick before, perfect. So how we would do this, we would enter here below the low. And that's the third aspect of entries, using entries, so entering a little bit more far to have more confidence. Now, of course, this we can enter right here when the candle close, but instead we enter a bit beyond the low to be able to get some more chance of getting a profit. Okay, let me just zoom in if you want to see this more clearly. So instead of entering here at the close, we enter here at the low a bit lower. Okay, that, that gives us some more room to enter. And the market has to show us it's going in our direction before we enter a trade, basically. So, we entered here below the low, put a stop loss beyond the high. Now we have a place to put a stop loss too because of the fact that we use these candlestick patterns. If we don't use the candlestick pattern, it's hard to know where to place a stop loss. But if we use that, it's much easier. And then we can look for different take profits. Okay, here I will do, let's say, a 3 to 1 and a 1 to 1 reward to risk levels, fixed levels. But you could do whatever you want. It doesn't matter here. It's up to you. And that would be how to do it basically with that. As you can see, the trade went quite a lot in the favor and all these moves here that happened after, we were still in the trade before that. So that's good, that's a really good thing. So that's how we can use these confluence levels here for our Bollinger Band strategy. If you have any other confluence factor you like, make sure you comment below with it. Let me know which one you use and why and how it works. And that way you can keep discussing after the video is over. So like I said before, I'm using Bollinger Band on a daily basis in the market every single day with my strategy, the main one that I use. Of course, you could go and create your own strategy by yourself and that's totally good, I recommend that. But if you wanna have something already built that you can use and follow and, and read about and learn, I put below in the description my strategy. The first link in the description is gonna teach you my strategy step by step. It's a free course, it's a thing to pay for that course. Uh, you can just learn, I don't really believe in hiding things and having a secret strategy. I prefer to give things for free so that you can learn, you can get some results and you can move forward and achieve your, your dream life. So link below for that, check it out. It's a free course. It's gonna take you a few days to finish it, but I highly recommend you go through it. And it's gonna to put together the things we talked about so far today in a more structured manner. And of course, we'll be getting all the rules of the strategy in a click, so that's really awesome. As a last reminder, subscribe to this channel if it's not done yet. I publish a video like this three times a week now. I try to bring you tips on a daily basis if I can. And I'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.